Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Just a couple of things to address real quick. Number one, I saw all of your comments about my microphone. You don't love that I hold it and I would love to say I'm strong enough to just keep doing it, but I'm not. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it right here instead and hopefully the audio still sounds good. The other thing we have to address is my eyeliner situation. I know we all noticed it already, but um, basically in a recent vlog, I, uh, <laughs> I did my eyeliner on camera and I was like, hey, today my eyeliner wings are sisters, not twins. In fact, they're more like distant relatives. Today's eyeliner situation, they're not even related. These are not even second cousins twice removed. No, no, no. <laughs> These are mere strangers out on the town. They have never met. I don't even think they live on the same planet, but that's why the bangs are looking lush and long today. I'm hoping to distract you with hair, um, but just know that I noticed it as well. So we'll just move on from that. But yeah, we're, uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna get into this video, which is my August wrap up. I read eight books this month, which, a lot of them were surprises. I had to switch back over to some school reading and because they were assigned for school, I was like, am I even gonna enjoy these? And then I devoured all of them. So I'm excited to talk about those. Um, but before we get into the books, I do wanna ask, as I do every month, what was the best book you read? And was it a predicted favorite or was it a total surprise? And then secondly, what was the genre you were really drawn to this month. But let's just get into the reads. Um, and we're gonna start with the first book that I read this month, which was also the book that the entire internet and human population read this month, which was Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died. Just, let's just take a moment for the cover, right? I'm thinking of that TikTok sound like, <laughs> now just give a moment to the dress, but to this exceptional cover instead, I, if I could go back in time and like be a book cover creator and artist, well, my career would have tanked because I have not a single artistic bone in my body, but it would have been a fun career as it crashed and burned in front of my eyes. Um, anyway, this cover is spectacular, just spectacular. And the contents within match because of how well done this book was. I was watching Uncarly's video around this book, which was so well done and so fun to watch. And one of the things that she says is that she loves when a celebrity writes a memoir and it's actually well-written, <laughs> which I totally understood what she meant because I felt like, I don't know, I, I only really knew Jeanette McCurdy from iCarly. So to me, I was kind of expecting this kind of like young approach to her life. And instead her writing was sophisticated, emotionally packed and just very vulnerable and angry. And I just felt like it was so well done writing wise. There are a million content warnings for this book. So please be aware before you pick it up. It deals with a lot of really heavy topics, but if you've ever been interested in Jeanette McCurdy or just like the plight of the child star and the pressure that comes with being a child star, I highly, highly recommend this. All right, the next book that I read this month was the only romance I read, and that was The Bodyguard. Basically, we've got two main characters in this romance, as usual. The main guy is this movie star who's like gone into hiding and he's just coming out of it. And then the main girl is his bodyguard. And something fun about this book is just having uh, this like very cute, short woman bodyguard who everyone underestimates, but is actually like kick ass at her job. Kick ass. Um, hi. <laughs> 13 year old me called, she wants her word back. You know what I mean? Anyway, she's great at her job. And so the two of them are working together and she tries to keep an emotional distance between her and her clients, but they spend a lot of time together and they end up feeling things. Um, and so it was a really interesting setup and just a really cool like character premise. However, I didn't love this one. And I think it's mainly the ending that I didn't love. I mean, of course, if there's a bodyguard involved with the story, you know that there is danger afoot, right? Like you have to assume that the bodyguard will actually be a bodyguard at some point. And so you're kind of waiting for this big moment of danger or fear. 
And that moment comes and it just didn't work for me. It felt really random to me. Um, not that it wasn't believable. I just, it felt very disconnected to the story that we had been reading the whole time. So I didn't love the ending. And I think that that did impact the, my overall feelings towards this book. But if you are looking for, you know, uh, a woman who loves her career and is great at it and a little like famous guy meets normal girl. <laughs> I'm using normal because it feels weird to like say celebrity and normal, but I hope you understand what I mean. Um, if you like that kind of idea, it was cute. It was fast. It just wasn't my favorite romance. So, all right, next up, I read a big bitch. Yeah, the double B uh, and that is Sirens and Muses. This was a book that I was really, really excited to get to. It's basically about four people and their relationship to each other and their relationship to a prestigious art school in New York, Virginia. Geography, <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, it's about these four people. Three of the people are students three, that's a three. And the fourth person is a kind of like visiting teacher, professor kind of guy who's also been an artist in his past. Um, and you watch as the four of them and their lives kind of intertwine and then loop back out again and then come back together and then go back apart again. So you're watching that happen. Um, and just their relationship to each other and art itself um, and the mediums that the four of them create in, how they feel inspired sometimes as artists, how they feel dejected as artists and their highs and lows in their personal and sexual relationships, as well as their artistic identities. Oh my God. I hope the publisher was listening and wrote a new synopsis because that was incredible. Not that this one wasn't good, uh, I just meant that that was, that one was pretty fucking good, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so overall, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really, really well written. And so it felt accessible. It was a beefy book. So, you know, it took me a little while to get through, but I felt like it was a really good character study because you are getting these four perspectives and you are seeing their highs and lows and you are getting their innermost thoughts, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. Um, my own only real complaint about this book is just one of the perspectives I just didn't really feel invested towards or care very much about. Um, and when there's only four perspectives, one whole perspective, is going to make an impact on your reading experience. Um, I think plenty of people love this book. So maybe, you know, I'm one of a few people who feel this way, but I really liked how three of the characters moved with each other and like carried one story into the other and how they impacted one another. But that fourth perspective felt just a little misplaced to me. So the conversations around art don't feel like I had to be an artist to understand it. It just felt like I was learning something new. So I hope any of that made sense because I'm not sure it did. <laughs> All right, and then the last non-school book I read this month was Sea of Tranquility. This is a book by the same author that wrote Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel. Anyway, I don't wanna say too much on this book just because this was my book club's book pick of the month, so I'm gonna talk about this on a live show with Joel and Elias. I will also leave all of my book club info down below. <laughs> um, but, so I don't wanna say too much. I will just be very vague and intriguing so that you attend the live show. But this book didn't do what I hoped it was gonna do for me as a reader. It's about as vague as I can make it, my friends. <laughs> um, I had very, very high hopes. And even though the writing was brilliant, I, um, I've talked about this before on my channel. I don't like talking about dreams. And this one kind of felt like I was in a fever dream the whole time. So again, I'm being really vague. I am really excited to see what Joel and Elias say about this book, just because I find that when we all talk about it on the live show, just the three of us and then everyone in the comments, I find myself seeing things I didn't see before or loving things that I didn't love before. So I'm excited to talk to them 
And yeah, I'll leave the information for the book club in the description. All right, now let's talk about school reading. Oh my God, I'm forgetting one, which means I actually read nine books this month. Let me go find the other one that's missing. Okay, so the first school book I'm gonna talk about, um, I just wanna give a real quick warning. There is a bit of water damage with this book, and I know that that can be upsetting to some readers, but it is my favorite thing about used books. <laughs> I love crunchy pages, warped pages, stained pages. Oh, I love it so much. And I'm the one that did the water damage and I have no regrets about it because I just love it so much. Anyway, let's get to it. Well, that is The Grapes of Wrath. Um, I talked about this in that reading vlog where I talked about my eyeliner and so many of you were so excited for me to read this book. And it was so cool to see how many comments there were about The Grapes of Wrath. I kind of thought there was like a general consensus that like most school books we all kind of hated from high school, you know? We're all like, okay, that was a high school book, but we've moved on to fiction now. Not that this isn't fiction. My Lord, Noelle, what am I saying? I just never often hear people say like, oh, I read that in high school. It's one of my favorite books. So it was really cool to see so many of you love this book. So anyway, let's talk about the book already. It's a long one and it's for school. So I went into it with a little bit of a bad attitude. I was like, even though Noelle, your track record is most books you've read for school, you've really loved, except for Bleak House. Um, aside from that one, you've loved most of the books you've read for school. So you should be more positive towards this book, but it was a 22 hour long audiobook. It just felt daunting. And I was like, is this gonna work for me? And it totally did, my friends. <laughs> it totally did. I feel like I've accomplished something this month. You know what I mean? When you get through a book and you're like, I did that, <laughs> you know? Um, that's how I feel towards this. Something, I've never read Steinbeck before, um, but I did see a lot of you say I should read East of Eden next, which you, someone said it had like a tie into Paradise Lost, which I'm there. I'm buying it immediately. I'm purchasing it and I'm reading it as soon as possible. Something that I really loved about this book was just how Steinbeck captured like, human chaos and human complexity so, so, so well. Um, I felt like I was really like in the car with this family as they migrated from Oklahoma to California. You're there with them. This is all during like the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl and they have to leave their home in order to like find work in California and yet California doesn't want them. And so you're with them the entire journey there, which is full of problems. And then they get there and it's full of even more problems. Like they really think they hit rock bottom when they leave Oklahoma and it's just the start. So there's a lot of pain and there is a weird ending. That's gonna be an ending that uh, keeps me up at night trying to decipher it because of how like just, weirdly full circle it is, <laughs> I don't know. There's just a lot to think about. So I thought it was really well done. It was written at a different time. So there's some stuff that's not okay. There's some things that the main character does that are seriously not okay. So it's definitely not a perfect book, but it was just, it was really great that I got to read it for school because honestly, I think it made me a better reader. I just feel like it was a whole like new type of writing that I got to unlock. So anyway, that's The Grapes of Wrath. All right, next up I read Native Son. And again, this was a long audiobook. It was a long book. I was like, okay, it's for school. Maybe I'm not gonna like it. Oh, oh my God, I was wrong. This was a book that once I started, I didn't wanna put down. I mentioned this in the reading vlog, but like 30 pages in, the story really takes off. And it's technically not a mystery, and yet it is thrilling. It is like you are sitting there with the main character, just so nervous and so stressed out. And um, the main character does commit a huge crime and you actually like sit with them as they commit this crime. So you have this kind of balance of like understanding that your main character has done something wrong, but then as you get to know them better, you're like, wait a minute, like how did you get to this point? How did you get to this decision? And then there's this huge crescendo, like for the last like 50 pages of the book, 
That is incredible. So if you've ever like seen Native Son um, and you've been like, I'm interested, but it's long, just give it a try. It might be exactly what you need. Really, really well done. And again, I feel like it made me a better reader. Okay, sorry if my camera angle shifted, my camera overheated. And when my camera overheats, I stick it in the freezer for five minutes. <laughs> And that's what I just did. So anyway, let's move on to the next book that I read this month, which was Song of Solomon. Listen up. This is my third Toni Morrison novel that I've read and no one does human consciousness quite like she did. In this book, we have a main character who is called Milkman by most of the other characters in the book. And so even though he's like our main character and he's like the one who we centrally focus, it slips in and out of his perspective so flawlessly that it just really feels like almost stream of consciousness with specific characters, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know, when I was reading it, I just felt like this, author knew exactly like how to capture the human mind and how to get that on paper. So the main um, the main story is all about uh, this man named Milkman. That's not his real name, but that's what most of the characters call him. Um, and it's really this like excavating of family history and him trying to figure out what happened in his parents' marriage, what happened with his aunt, um, where he comes from, who he is, and the closer he gets to discovering himself, the shorter his life is becoming. Um, and it was just so interesting because I love that idea of like family history, uncovering the past, asking questions, trying to figure out like who your parents were before you were born, things like that. And yet oftentimes it can be ugly. Oftentimes it can be uncomfortable. And I feel like that was so well done in this book and just so, like just so true, you know what I mean? Because it's easy, like when you're reading a book about family history, you're like, and then we met and we fell in love and then we had children. And even if I was sad at one point, we've come out the other side and everything's fine. And in this book, it's almost like a warning. Like sometimes you don't need to know the full family history. And it's also so interesting because since Milkman is your main character, you feel for him and you want him to be okay and you want him to figure things out. And because you're in his consciousness a lot of the time, you don't see his own faults because in his own mind, he likes himself and he thinks he's a good person. But then we have a few characters that like point out to him, like here's actually how you're not a good person and let me list the ways. And then he has his own set of reflections as the novel progresses and as he figures out more things about his family that he's like, actually, maybe I'm not a great person. Maybe I haven't always got it right. And there's actually one passage that, this isn't a spoiler, but it says, it sounded old, deserve, old and tired and beaten to death, deserve. Now it seemed to him that he was always saying or thinking that he didn't deserve some bad luck or some bad treatment from others. He told Guitar that he didn't deserve his family's dependence, hatred or whatever, that he didn't even deserve to hear all the misery and mutual accusations his parents unloaded on him. And then it goes on and on and I don't wanna get too far into it cause I don't wanna spoil anything, but that's what I mean. Like he's able to stop for a second and be like, who am I really? And am I really as good as I think I am? Anyway, it was so good. Again, consciousness flowing from one mind to another. So, so, so well done by Morrison. Loved it. All right, next up, the shortest book I've read this month and also maybe this entire year was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It fits in the palm of my hand and it's about a quarter a quarter wide thick. <laughs> um, I feel like many of us know the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have like one good guy, which is Dr. Jekyll, and then one bad guy, which is Mr. Hyde. And if you don't know the story, I'm actually not going to spoil it for you. But one of the really fun things about this read was that it reminded me so much of Frankenstein. Um, really about like creator and monster, the like thirst of knowledge and discovery and then creating something terrible from that was really, really haunting. And I thought it was really fun to read. So yeah. 
All right, and then the final book I read this month that I also finished this morning, so it's fresh off the old mind burner, <laughs> um, was The Joy Luck Club, which I loved so much. I mean, the deal with this book, and it's gonna be a surprise to no one, I think we could all say it at the same time, generational unfolding, family dynamics, everything I could want in a book, honestly. <laughs> um, this book was spectacular. And even though it's a novel, it reads kind of like a short story collection because you're getting short stories from each individual character and those stories start to overlap and twist together and become like this fully formed novel. But oh my God, like my dreams of loving short stories and loving novels and like family dynamics and generational unfolding and um, a matriarch family that's filled with these women and mothers and daughters and the reflections of both. I mean, it was so good. It was so good. You're basically reading about mother's perspectives as they lived in China and migrated to San Francisco, the Bay Area. And then you're also getting their daughter's reflections on like what it means to have like grown up in San Francisco and have a mother from China, but not feel as connected to that part of themselves. And on the one side, moving away from it. And then on the other side, feeling like they missed their chance to really know themselves. And it was so good. This was one of my favorites of the month. And then I think um, Native Son also. I think these are my two favorites of the month. And again, they were for school and I thought I wasn't gonna enjoy them just because they were school and they were assigned, but I loved them and I'm so glad I got to read them. And again, I just feel like a better reader at the end of this month. And I'm really excited about next month's reads. I mentioned Sister Carrie in my last video and so many people had such wonderful things to say about that book. So I think I'm actually gonna start that this weekend because just you all had such sweet comments about that book. So anyway, yeah, that is the wrap up my friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.